morning guys. Been out in the woods, scouting around a little bit. Of course, it's bow season here in Indiana. Not really hunting, just out looking to see what I can see. And I'm gonna have me a little bit of breakfast. Cook up some coffee, maybe some smoked sausage, something like that. I'll get this going a little bit and I'll be right back with you. Well, you know, guys, out here enjoying the morning. I was out here quite a little bit before I decided to stop and cook something. I've got some coffee water boiling right now. I'm going to take off and uh, cook me up some smoked sausages. I picked up this little the cooling racks, all it is, like at the dollar store or whatever. Just going to throw it over the fire, throw a couple of smoked sausages on. I got some block cheese. Just picked that up, drug it out of the house. I wasn't planning on staying the whole day out here. I just came out this morning to walk around the woods and enjoy myself. You know, it rained last night. You can be really, really quiet if you're careful and watch your steps and watch your surroundings. You can see a lot of wildlife. You know, it's not all about just coming out here and building a fire and, you know, sitting around cooking stuff and everything. You know, it's nice to have that. That's a comfort. But you can find all kinds of things to look at out here in the woods. I found some really different types of fungi. Brought a little camera with me just to take some stills, just different things. You know, the woods is a wonderful place. There's everything in nature that you could possibly think of right out your back door sometimes, you know. It doesn't have to be in some big national forest or state forest or park, you know. It can be a small city park sometimes with just small wooded areas, you know. Just get out and spend some time in the woods. It doesn't have to be you know, all about doing the cooking thing and everything else, you know, it's it's just getting out and doing some stuff, you know, just enjoying that dirt time, seeing nature, seeing wildlife, you know, these guys, they talk about what you need to carry in your pack and what you need, you know, you can throw a haversack on, carry just some basics, carry some water with you, you know, some block cheese like this, go out and just spend a day. It doesn't take anything, you know. I mean, it's not something you don't have to have the best knife. You don't have to have the best hatchet. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just getting out and enjoying things. You know, this is the fall. It's a wonderful time of year. You can see the leaves falling. All the color change, you know. It's, it's a very enjoyable. The weather's a little cooler now. It's a little warm today, but the weather's cooling down. You know, so get out and spend some of that time. Well, I'm going to cook some sausages and get me a cup of coffee. I'll be back with you in just a few. Hey guys, rolling some sausages around on a little dollar store grill for a total of a dollar. Works pretty good. I could have cooked them in a skillet, but I like them grilled. I could have put them on a piece of stick, but I just wanted to try that out, see if it was something to work. Only weighs just a few ounces. It'd be a nice thing to have in the pack. If you did need a grill for some reason, we have a little bit of coffee going here. This water was boiling hot. Huh? Take my cheek. It's pretty warm. I'm set for a minute here. Let this thing cool off a little bit. Hey, it worked. Alrighty, guys. Oh, yeah. Got a couple pieces of bread here. Just that 
Amish bread. There's an Amish place not too far from here. They fresh baked bread every day. A little grate worked out fantastic. It won't take a lot of heat, but you don't need a lot of heat to cook something small like this. Of course, I got my coffee going here. I use them coffee bags sometimes. Seems to work out pretty good. This thing's a little crispy, but just wanted to make sure I got it good and warm. Not too bad. Like I was saying, guys, you know, it don't have to be a big thing, big production to get out to the woods. And, you know, you don't even have to have a video camera. You know, if you just take some stills, you can actually create like a, a slideshow with still. You know, you don't, it doesn't take a lot to just get out and enjoy a little bit of what nature has to offer. And, you know, you'll be the better for it. It'll teach you, if nothing else, some understanding of what animals do and their habits you know a lot of guys they talk about you know well you should have a trap in your pack or you know you should learn how to use snares or whatever well you got to understand how animals operate to begin with and you know i mean that's that's part of just coming out and spending some time in the woods and seeing what game trails look like and, and doing a little bit of study about what tracks you're looking at when you see something in the game trail, is it a raccoon, is it a rabbit? You know, those things with a snare trap totally different. One's a different height when it walks down a trail, you know? I mean, leg hold traps are great. They're a little heavy, but you know, you got a way better chance of catching something. You just gotta check it a lot more often. But, uh, you know, I hear a lot of these guys that talk, well, you know, snares are light, and, but do you know how to use a snare? Well, I'm going to set some snares up, and uh, I'll take you, walk you through the process of making them and, and do everything right up to the point of setting them, but it's not really trapping season yet. Like I said, it's bow season in Indiana. I just, I, I wasn't hunting today. I just, if I would have seen a squirrel, I probably would have shot it this morning. Unfortunately, I didn't. Heard lots of them. Too many leaves on trees right now, a lot of different colors, and I wasn't patient enough, but if I'd have been patient enough, I'd had my trusty old 20 gauge, you know, just a single shot. A lot of guys recommend these, you know, I got a couple different size shot shells for them. Let's see, this is uh, number eight shot, and I think I got some number four. Well, actually, that's a slug, but not using any slugs at this point in time. Now, I do have one of those adapters in here, and this is a 357 adapter for a 20 gauge. Or you can shoot 38 special, either one, 357 or 38 special. I can't get it to come out of there. But my uh, thing with carrying that in there, I seen some uh, dogs out here earlier this morning, and I went ahead and slipped that in because I thought that'd be just a little more lethal up close if I needed it, you know. But fortunately, I didn't. Well, guys, I'm going to enjoy something to drink here and something to eat, and I'll get back with you. I've been working on a couple of projects as far as hatchet handles and axe handles and rehafting and show you some comparisons. So I'm going to grab a bite here and maybe read a little bit out of my book, and we'll do something here in a little bit. Well guys, I'm going to make some uh, char cloth 
while I'm out here, I wanted to show you something on camera here. What I did for a tin. You can see this tin. You see that little tiny hole in there? Right there? I put one in the lid. You can see it right there. So when you put the tin together and the lid, all you gotta do line those two holes up and there you go but when you want it to be somewhat tight no moisture to get in or not as much I mean no tins turn perfectly sealed you just turn it a little bit but when you're making the char cloth and you want it to vent there you go real simple solution I'm gonna get it started okay guys this is what I got just like off an old pair of basically blue jean material but it's a cotton duck you know 100% cotton so it don't burn up like with polyester or something like that it wouldn't be very good but that's it before she goes in we'll see how it does okay guys I told you I'd come back and show you some of the projects I've been working on a little bit um, one of them is I had this old boys axe that I've carried for years and years needed rehafted so I went ahead and bought a new handle for it and fixed it all up, put a new wedge in it, soaked it in boiled linseed oil. I got a few shots of it this morning when I was using it to work up some kindling for fire starting. Now this is a, you know, just like I was saying earlier, this axe didn't cost, it's not, you know, a brand name. But you know what, if you treat your tools right, and if you don't like the, ha the, a the haft or the way that it's hafted, the handle, you know, get a different one. You know, now this is an axe that I just I just purchased uh, when we did our squirrel trip, and because the handle was loose in this one, and I didn't have time to rehaft it. So this, and as you can see, the handle profile is much more bulky through this area than what this one is. You know, you got a lot more slim profile, but very serviceable. You know, no, it's not some brand name, but you know what? If you treat it right, and if you don't like the handle that's in it, buy one that you do like put in it. You know, the head, if it's taken care of, and you sharpen it, and you make sure that it's good, you know, with oil and that type of stuff, and treat it right, it'll last you a long time. No, it isn't some brand name, Grand Force Brooks, whatever, Swedish, but you know what? It doesn't have to be. You know, it, this, these people get all about how much you got to have this brand name or that brand name. Well, you don't, you know. This one here, I'm pretty sure it came from Harbor Freight. New handle. The other hand one, it was okay, but it was loose. And it had one of those round things in the head, and it was epoxied over. Now, see, this one's not epoxied over, but it's got one of those round things in the head. So, you know, I just knocked the handle out of it. found a longer handle, something I liked a little better. The one that was on it was real short. It was up about right here didn't give you a lot of leverage this one just got just that little extra really like it handles a lot better I was using it to split down some kindling a little finer works great another thing I showed you a little bit earlier I'm working on making some char cloth we'll see how that goes now this is a deal I picked up yesterday at a garage sale it was just it's a coin bag okay nothing fancy but I took and put some grommets in it, you know, and a piece of para, you know, 550, works for a great little poke. Now I'll show you what I carry in here, my dirty old skillet. Now this is one of them lightweight skillets, but the nice thing about it, I can throw it down in this. You know, the bag costs 50 cents. What do grommets cost? Hardly anything. Cinch this thing down, hanging off my pack, it's not clanging around, it's quiet. The dirt is all contained inside here, so you don't have to worry about it. You know, if you don't like the stuff on it, dye the bag, whatever, you know. I, I mean, I personally don't care, but it's just one of those type of deals that it was cheap. And it's very serviceable. You know, I'm trying to convey the point today, I guess, of you don't have to have brand name tools to get out in the woods. You don't have to have a brand name knife. You know, I bought this knife. I'm a reenactor. And, you know, it's an eight pin knife. It's not something you'd want to baton. I'm not all about batoning knives. That's why I have these. Some guys, oh, well, you know, 
it's got to have this thickness of blade before I baton it, whatever. I don't want to baton my knife. My knife is for cutting. It is not for splitting wood. That's what these are for. Some guys don't understand that. I understand if you're in the worst situation, worst scenario. But you know what? If you're out bushcrafting and you're splitting wood with your knife, I'd say sacrifice something else and carry a hatchet. You know? I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Everybody's entitled to one. But, you know, I've had an enjoyable day out here today. I'm enjoying my coffee, what's left of it. Got to see some deer this morning. There's a huge lake back behind me. It was foggy, it was misty when I got out here this morning. It was absolutely beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. You know, there's a lake right in the town that I live in. And I go out there and walk around that some mornings, right when it's getting daylight. And it's right on a highway, a major thoroughfare highway that runs through, clear through Indiana, north to south. And you know what? There's all kinds of wildlife out there. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Get out and enjoy the woods. Enjoy nature. No matter where you do it, just get out and have some fun. Well, I'm going to sign off for now. See if I can uh, come up with some char cloth here in a minute. And I'll show you what happened when we get that done. Alrighty, guys. I'm back. And uh, just wanted you to see the char cloth is done. Whole big pile of it now. I like to, whenever I do build a fire, I like to try and get as much out of it as I can. That way I'm not, you know, really wasting the usefulness of it. You know, I mean, just like that. If you carry a little tin around or a sack or anything and put some raw fixings in it for making tar cloth and you got your tar tin, hey, make some up. You never have too much. I wanted to show you this. This is a mask or sheath I made for this hatchet. I need to get one made up for my camp axe. But it's real simple. Just, you know, all made out of one piece of leather except for the loop for the belt. Now, most of the time I carry it on my pack. But I made it both ways so, that, you know, it's more versatile that way. And then I was talking about reading a book. I was reading this book, it's Wildwood Wisdom. Ellsworth Jaeger, you know, it's got a ton of stuff in it. Like I said, I picked it up for 50 cents at a garage sale somewhere. You just can't go wrong with that kind of knowledge from somebody that has years of knowledge as far as packing and camping and that type of stuff. You know, you just got to learn as much as you can, and nobody ever knows everything. You know, I mean, you, you can't just watch one or two people on YouTube you can't follow one or two people in the TV or anything like that and learn everything you need to know you know I mean it's it's a continuous learning experience being out in the woods and experimenting with your tools and you know learning how to work on your tools even you know as far as if it's rehafting an axe or cleaning a shotgun you know I mean it's it's just all those different things are just skills that are learned you know you can read and you know knowledge like they say weighs nothing and knowledge is your best friend if you would get in a situation that you know things are bad you've lost part of your equipment or you get in a situation where you're stranded somewhere you know that's this right here sitting around the fire uh sitting at home you know on a winter night or a rainy day and you can't get out and do something sit down and read a book you know they're cheap and there's tons of knowledge out there well i'm gonna wrap it up for today and i hope you enjoy this video uh stay tuned there'll be more to come i'm sure Well, Mama told me when I was young, she'd sit beside me, my only son, and listen closely to what I say. And if 
you do this, it'll help you some sunny day. I. Oh, take your time. Don't live too fast. Troubles will come. 